welcome to Bible Baptist Church. If you're able, let's stand and take your hymnal, hymn number 109. 109. We'll sing out on that first verse of Send the Light, hymn number 109. There's a call comes ringing for the restless wakes in the light, in the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, in the light. In the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Hold that second. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And the golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Let's remain standing, if you would, please, for just a moment. Um, Brother Chad Owens, you can make your way on up and get you to pray for us this morning. Um, Brother Charles Ray uh, Sellers had texted me and said, Brother J.D., I'm asking for your prayers for my niece Castle and her husband Heath. After an eight-month battle, they lost their precious baby girl, and uh, she was born at 14 ounces and overcame a lot in, in, the, in this eight months. But God took her home, and that was yesterday. And so please pray for uh, the family there that God would just give grace and comfort and I, I think my wife and Janine are going to go out and see them this afternoon and and try to be a comfort th to them and so please pray for them and we appreciate that very much they're making the arrangements today and all of that so a lot going on there and then um, I ask you to pray for brother uh, uh, Charles Best and and uh, he's sick this morning also uh, Tanya and Chastity and Cody and we've got just several that have been out sick and so forth and so pray for them um, pray for Miss Lita Miller, our missionary to uh, uh, missionary wife to uh, Scotland, and uh, she's been in the hospital over there. Miss D Smith had back surgery, and uh, uh, put, they put a larger cage in. That's Brother Tony Smith with the Bible Ministry Victory Baptist Press out of Milton, Florida, and they come through ever so often. Then my preacher friend out in California, Brother Doug Fisher, is just having major seizures, and I don't think he's going to get the pastor again. It's really affected his mind and having to have special care and. He's just not really responding. So please uh, pray for that situation. And he pastors Lighthouse Baptist Church in San Diego. It's a great church there. Pray for Nellie Downey. It's Miss Stephanie's grandma. She'll be having tests done. For Brother Chad Owen's um, dad, he'll be having shoulder reconstruction on February the 8th. Pray for Johnny Corley. Uh, Johnny's got a kidney donor. And uh, pray that that would all be a, you know, a fit and everything would work out on that. And, um, just, you know, uh, he's been doing dialysis and it'll be a blessing to to get back to having kidney functions and all of that. Okay, we appreciate that very, very much. And um, again, just pray for those that are sick. Pray for our missionaries and our military. Pray for Will Hill in Okinawa, uh, Japan, that God would be with him and bless him. And then uh, pray for Traveling Mercies. Um, 
with our anniversary Sunday, we've got a lot of out-of-town visitors coming in and fly, Brother Burton and them are flying in Friday and their whole family, so just pray for them for safe travels and Brother Aaron are come, coming up from New Iberia and uh, Jake's trying to come for Sunday night. We're not sure about that, but anyway, we'll see. And so anyway, uh, David and Jessica Dedman from Tennessee and uh, uh, Dylan and Isabel from Oklahoma City. And so we got just a lot of out-of-town people coming. So anyway, we want you to be, be much in prayer. And we want to round up in-town people too, amen, have a good crowd. And we're going to have dinner on the grounds, and we all like to eat. And so it's going to be an eating meeting. But uh, I don't even know. I'm going to preach next Sunday morning. And... Uh, so we're probably going to have a double header Sunday night with Brother Aaron and Brother Burton, and maybe have a triple header if Brother Jake comes in. I don't even know. I preached one time in the Philippines, and we had a triple header. I thought, what in the world? I couldn't believe they preached the three preachers in a row. And man, them Filipinos, they loved it. And uh, I thought, man, this is awesome. I mean, there was about there was a big crowd there, like 1,700 people. There was just like a sea of people out there, and they had choirs singing, and they were shouting. I mean, they were having a time, and I was thinking, three preachers, wow, this is going to be, but man, they, they didn't come to get out, they came to get in, amen, and they, they loved it, so anyway, praise the Lord, but we'll, we'll, we'll do something, so pray for wisdom on all the services and testimony, Brother Burton said his kids are ready to sing, Brother Aaron's family's ready to sing, and so we're going to have the youth choir sing, it's just going to be a great day, have some testimonies interspersed, and 30 years, amen, to God be the glory, 30 years, and we got these brochures and flyers. Uh, back in the day when we first came here, he's got a picture in the back and get one of our little family. And Joe, Brother Joe was 11, Janine was 9, Jake was 5, and Jenna was 2. And then here we are 30 years later, amen, still faithful and serving the Lord. And isn't it, isn't it good? I mean, God's good. I'm glad I'm still here, amen, still kicking, still preaching. It's Deanna, we just love the Lord. Love, our family loves the Lord. It's a blessing, amen. And um, so we got these brochures back there. This is like something you could put up at a... Um, in your at work, you know, hang on the board. These are little things you can just pass out whoever and give everybody one you see, you know, along the way, these little half sheets, and just to let people know. And, and if they can't come, they could pray maybe, and that would be a blessing. Amen. And we just want God to be here next week, and we want to give God the glory uh, for what he's done. Amen. Amen. Brother Chad, come pray for us. Amen. I was going to tell you, I was out so winning yesterday, and uh, Brother Weedo, I ran into a lady. She was probably in her 30s, and uh, she said, y'all y'all still have that blue bus? I said, yeah, I still sit up on the hill. She says, when I was a kid, y'all used to come get me every week. She yeah. said, I'm going to try to come for y'all's 30th, so yeah. praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. We just humbly approach you this morning, dear Lord, but boldly. We want to thank you for all that you've done, and we want to thank you for our pastor and for this church. Thank you, Lord, for all the souls that's been saved, and Father, you heard all the prayer requests, all the sick, the ones that's lost loved ones, the ones who are facing surgeries and uncertainties and financial difficulties. I just pray for them this morning, Lord. I just lift them up to you. I just pray that you'll reach down in a special way and just, just draw them close to you. Now, Father, be with the services this morning, be with the services this coming week, the 30th anniversary. Pray that you'll make it a good day, a big day. Pray that you'll bless it, and I just pray that you'll show up. Now, Father, we need you. We love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, may be seated. She thought he was a gardener when she met him on the road. She had gone to see the tomb where Jesus lay.
105 rescue the perishing 105 rescue the perishing care for the dying snatch them in pity from sin and the grave we for the erring ones lift up the fallen Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Hold that second. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with him earnestly, plead with him gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save on that last. Rescue the perishing, dude, he demands it. Strength for thy labor, the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell a poor wanderer, a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Thank you. you may be seated. We're going to watch Brother Rachel's, um four and a half minute video at this time and Brother Reitzel is a missionary to Spain that's with us so we're going to take a little trip to Spain and learn a little bit more about the Reitzel family then after that Brother Larry will come and, and just give a little testimony whatever he wants to say and, and uh, boy I'm glad you're here today I mean I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord I mean I love church and it's not something I have to do it's something I get to do amen so anyway let's take a little trip to Spain and that'll be a blessing and hopefully amen Old devil's been trying to give us a hard time on this projector this morning, but we're going to give him a left hook, I think. You want to come give a testimony first, or you rather wait till after the video? Yeah, go ahead. While he's working on it. <clears throat> so for those of you who weren't here for Sunday school services, we are the Reitzel family going to Spain. My wife, Brenda. My daughters Elizabeth and Lily and my son Andrew are all the ones going. I have two other children. I have a 25-year-old son and a 22-year-old daughter. They were both married and staying here in the States. Uh, we've been on deputation now for about three years. Um, we actually uh, are out of Bible Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. My pastor is Mike Files. We're working with Baptist International Missions Incorporated, or BIMI. Like I said, we've been on deputation three years. We're now at 97% of our support, and so we are at the very end of this journey um, and on our way to get to the country of Spain. One of the things I could ask that you would seriously pray about, um, we've got some paperwork that needs to come from Spain so that I can send in my visa application. And so that I'm, I'm just kind of in limbo waiting for this piece of paper. Um, and so just pray that the Lord will allow that piece of paper to come very quickly. Um, when we get over there, you'll see a couple things in here, but one of the things that we'll have to do is start off doing language school. We'll do language school in the first term, but then after language school and getting to know the language, getting to know more about the culture, then we'll just go wherever the Lord leads us. Uh, my, my job is going to be planning churches over there in Spain, and so the idea is to get over there and try to go wherever God sends us. We're going to start off in the capital city, and then from there, wherever he decides to send us. Spain is kind of a, a neat area. There's 
three different three different climates or just about all the climates that we would see over here are all right there in the country of Spain. In the north, it's mountainous, and so you got kind of snowy and colder weather up there. And in the middle, it's more arid, so like in Arizona or New Mexico kind of atmosphere. And then on the su- on the southern uh, borders or on the uh, on the coastlines, you're looking at the beautiful, lush. Um, Mediterranean Sea and, and all that goes along with that. So just a beautiful country. Size is about the size of Texas from top to bottom, uh, but not quite as wide as Texas is. Um, but, um, you know, not, not real big, but a lot of people and a lot of people that need to know Jesus. And so thank you so much for the opportunity just to say a little bit about what God has done in our lives and how he's taking care of us. And uh, we're excited to, to just uh, continue on for him and do what he, had, he, is, he has called us to do. Amen? He has called us to go to these people in Spain. Amen. Spain, or officially the Kingdom of Spain, is a sovereign state mostly located on the Iberian Peninsula in Europe. The country's mainland is bordered to the south and east by the Mediterranean Sea, on the north and northeast by France, Andorra, and the Bay of Biscay, and to the west and northwest of Portugal and the Atlantic Ocean. It is said that the name Spain has a meaning of edge or border. Spain has a population of over 46 million, and of course, the official language is Spanish. We did much research trying to figure out the direction and the city and the the people that God would have us to go to. We found out that 67% of the people are Roman Catholic. 27% of the people were irreligious, a word meaning indifferent. They didn't really care and then 4% Islamic, and then another 1% that just says other. They just need a true gospel preaching church planted in the area. Altogether, about 9% of the entire Spanish population attends religious services at least once per month. Though Spanish society has become considerably more secular in recent decades. And we, as a family, are going to go to the city of Madrid. A population of 3.3 million people. The area itself contains 6.1 million people. We are going to go there and work with a veteran missionary already planted in the area. Julio and Andrea Valesquez have been on the field for 37 years. Eleven of those years, they were in the country of Venezuela. They have now lived and worked in the country of Spain for over 20 years. They are currently in a suburb of Madrid. Their daughter, Deborah, and son-in-law, Flavius, are currently working with them at the church, leading the song services. Flavius was saved at the church four years ago and was trained and has been preaching and teaching. Their son, David, and daughter-in-law are working about 20 minutes north of Madrid at another church plant. Many souls have been saved and many baptized through their faithful service. Going to be evangelizing and soul winning and just helping in their ministry to start with. Because we're going to be in language school at the time, that we will be uh, learning more about the language, learning more about the culture, but being able to put that into practice working with the Velasquez family. They've been on the field for more than 14 years and and have a great work that they've already got established there. It's gonna be our job to do the best we can to to help and, and be a servant for that ministry and then be able to springboard from that ministry and go out on our own. Such a huge area in Madrid that we could go two miles away and still be reaching people they haven't even talked to yet. We are so grateful for your support financially and prayerfully. My family and I could not do this without you partnering with us. It is up to 
us together to go and give the gospel to the people in Spain. was a blessing wasn't it did you anything else you want to say or you good okay good all right well praise the lord um let's do this let's uh let's stand together and brother let's sing one more can we do that let's stand together grab your songbook what number we're going to sing number 104 number 104 and i'll just let you stretch again then we'll have our offering and we'll be be uh, ready for the mess first and last of hymn number 104 my faith looks up to thee My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be Thank you. May be seated. We'll have the ushers come forward. And um, Brother Larry, I don't know if y'all are going to still be around, but uh, if y'all are, we'd like to invite you to our missions conference. It's in April, first part of April. I don't know if y'all have any openings in. Are you booked up, or do you know? Uh, Miss Peggy, what week is that? I think it's the 10th, April 10th through the 13th. April 10th. It's, it's going to go Sunday through Wednesday this year for the first time ever. But if you need an offering, you'll slip your hand up. These fellows will get one to you. Y'all got something going? Or can you come a couple of days or anything? Or going to be? Okay, let's do that. Be here Tuesday, Wednesday. We're, we're one missionary short. I think we got three coming. We normally do four. And uh, so we'll just make y'all our fourth one. That way we'll be, be sure to take you on. Amen. That would be a blessing, okay? And 97%, man, he's knocking on the door, amen, just a little. And I'd like that. We don't have a missionary to Spain. Wouldn't that be a blessing to have a missionary to Spain? And uh, so I praise the Lord for them. And they can come in for a couple of days of our conference, and it'll be a great time in the Lord. And Brother, Brother Mari Gibson is going to be preaching our conference, and he's a great preacher. Yeah, so we love Brother Gibson. And, and so anyway, uh, it's, it's exciting, though. Um, let me tell you all one little joke. Uh, Brother Files told me this joke. This little boy was in a custody hearing. He was in a custody hearing with, uh, you know, his mom and dad kind of fighting over who's going to get him. And so the judge said, son, I want to talk to you in, in my chambers by, your, by yourself. And so he said, I've looked over everything, son. And he said, I'm going to, I really, I think it would be better for you to go with your dad. The little boy started crying. He said, no, please, not my dad. He beats me. He beats me bad. And so the judge says, oh, okay, 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 well, we'll let your mom have you then. The little boy's crying even harder. He said, she beats me too. She beats me, too. And so the judge thought for a minute. And he said, okay. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you to the Dallas Cowboys. They can't beat anybody. So. <laughs> and I'm a Cowboy fan, but I thought that was, I thought that was uh, I'm going to award you to the Dallas Cowboys. That's terrible, isn't it? What a great Sunday morning joke. I just love these. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Brother Richard, will you step up here and pray for us, please? Well, you know what they say, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Amen. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you for the day, and I thank you for this uh, amazing uh, meeting and uh, just allowing us to worship you. 
And I ask, Lord, just be with all the uh, prayer requests and for those that lost loved ones and for those that have ailments and trials, uh, Lord, and and just special prayers for uh, the Rutzels for their uh, missionary journey and just give them guidance and love in that regard. And uh, pray, Lord, to just uh, be with the message and be with the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know will look for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Though tempests may blow and the storm clouds will rise, obscuring the brightness of life. I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies, the Master looks on at the strife. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in His great love. From all harm, safe in His sheltering arms. I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. I know that he safely will carry me through, no matter what evils be tied. Why should I then care, though the tempest may blow, if Jesus walks close to my side? Living by faith, in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all I'm in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. From all I'm in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. All right, that was a blessing, wasn't it? Brother Rachel taught um, Sunday school this morning, and he um, went to Acts chapter 17, and I've been preaching through the book of Acts, and we're in Acts chapter 16, so he kind of scared me there. I thought, oh, he's going he's gonna to preach my message this morning in Sunday school, and uh, then I'm going to have to fire him, amen? <laughs> but um, if you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter number 16, and uh, Acts chapter number 16 and uh, I enjoyed that good singing. I, I thank their daughter for our daughters for beating us in volleyball the other day. We were in the state tournament, and uh, their team, uh, Jacksonville, beat our team in uh, volleyball. And it was a really good game. I thought we were going to come back and get them, but we didn't. Amen. It went three games, and our boys made it to the championship uh, game. And wow, we were up by 17. I thought we had them, and I guess they thought we did too. But anyway, they came back, and we got beat by one at the buzzer. I was a buzzer beater, and we were all uh, sad. And uh, But there is life after basketball, amen. 
And uh, I was real proud of our boys. We played hard and all that stuff, but uh, we just didn't come out on top on that one. Amen. But we shall return. And that's how that works. You win some and you lose some. So apparently the Lord didn't want us to win that one for some reason. Amen. I hadn't figured it out yet, but anyway, um, I like to win. In Acts chapter number 16, um, last week we talked about uh, Timothy, Timotheus being chosen by Paul and He kind of joined the team there as a young man, and Paul had led him to the Lord. And we talked a lot about Timothy's character, and they had a good mama and a good granny that loved the Lord, and they poured their life into him And and as a young man. And, boy, they were the real deal Christians. Their faith was, the Bible said, it was unfeigned. There was no pretense, no facade. They weren't faking it. And, by the way, parents, it's important that you live the Christian life in front of your children. Because children can tell if you're faking it. If you act one way at home and then you act another way at church, that's, that's being hypocritical. That's being a fake. That's being a phony. And kids can see through that stuff, you know. And, and we can put on our little church faces, but the Bible says men look on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. So, you know, you can't, you can't kid a kid and you can't fool God because God's omniscient. He knows everything. By the way, it's good to have Brother John uh, and, and Brother Leo, uh, Leo's, uh, Leon's sister here and brother-in-law, and they're getting ready to move to Lawton, Oklahoma. Thank you all for coming today. And uh, she invited me to come to Lawton and see the mountains and all that. So uh, I'm coming. I just don't know when, okay? So we'll drink some coffee or do something, amen? But anyway, thank you all for being here today. We, we love your brothers and, uh, and your family. We thank the Lord for you. Now, if you're visiting here today, we love you. Appreciate you coming our way. And uh, thank the Lord. So anyway, we're going to jump in today in verse number 6. Uh, Acts chapter 16. We're going to pick up in verse number 6. And again, we've got Paul and Silas and Timotheus and the beginning of Paul's second missionary journey, okay? And, and um, verse number 6 says, Now when they had gone throughout Pergia and the region of Galatia, okay, uh, there in verse number 6, um, so they, Paul wanted to kind of reach out uh, to new areas, but he wanted to kind of go by some of the old churches that they had started uh, before, um, and just to be an encouragement, you know, to those that uh, churches he had started on his first missionary journey, he wanted to go back through there and kind of touch base with them. Verse number five, so were the churches established in the faith. And just, you know, he just wanted to be an encouragement and, 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 and increased in number daily. So they were hitting on all cylinders and God was doing a great work and, and all that. And so they, they went back through the, and saw these churches. And, and then it says, um, uh, and again, the Holy Spirit uh, is the one that does the directing. So next Sunday is our 30th anniversary, and a dear preacher friend of mine, I saw him here recently in Oklahoma City, he's in his 80s now, Dr. J.C. House. Years ago when I was praying about coming to El Dorado, Arkansas, Dr. J.C. House told me, he said, man, I would not go to El Dorado. He said, man, there's a church on every corner. He said, you know, it's a graveyard of independent Baptist churches. He said, do not go there. And I love Dr. House, and he's a really a wise man, great man of God, great preacher. But uh, anyway, I, I, uh, you know, he's not God. And I had to do what I felt like God wanted me to do. I respected his counsel. I just didn't follow it. Are you all with me? And so, uh, again, he laughs about it now. And he said, uh, I said, you remember when you told me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He starts laughing. He says, yeah, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. (laughs) You know, you have the Holy Spirit to guide you, okay? And so, uh, now when Paul and them had gone throughout Pergia in the region region of Galatia, and, and now watch this now, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. So they wanted to go one way, and the Holy Ghost said, No, 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 you ain't going that way. Okay? And after they were come to Mysia, or I don't know how you say all these words, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. So in other words, Paul wanted to go here, and he wanted to go there, and the Lord said, No, you're not going here. And the Lord said, The Holy Ghost of God said, No, you ain't going there either. So I kind of feel like Paul... Uh, you know, there was some prohibiting going on in, in their directing, okay, the directing of their travels. And uh, uh, again, uh, you know, they couldn't go here, they couldn't go there. And God not only directs us with positives, but he also directs us with negatives. And when God opens one door and closes another door, when maybe it's a door we think we should do this, and maybe God says, no, don't do that. Well, man, we have to accept that because God may be protecting us from something that we don't know about, okay? So God closes doors. The Bible says a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many adversaries. But God does open and close doors, okay? And I believe that with all of my heart, okay? And uh, he closes doors and he directs us uh, into his will, okay? 
and uh, into His will. Several years ago, I was preaching out in uh, El Cajon, California, and uh, a young man who, uh, Pastor Doug Fisher, his son Jonathan, was a youth pastor at Victory Baptist Church there in El Cajon, and and I went out there to do a missions conference, and, and I actually stayed in Jonathan and Ruth's home. There was a young couple there, the youth pastor of the church, and I had taught Jonathan at Champion Baptist College back in the day, and he was one of Jake's friends, and, and we were buddies. He'd come down here and, and to see us at our home, and I knew Jonathan uh, pretty well, and we laughed, had a lot of fun together. Well, anyway, Jonathan and Ruth were so excited. They're a young couple, and they hadn't been married that long, and they, they were so excited about hosting me in their home. So I was excited that they were excited and, and all of that. And, man, they cooked special meals for me. And I didn't know it at the time, but they gave me their bed. They, they had a little two-bedroom deal, but they, they slept on a blow-up mattress in the other room, and I didn't even know that. They gave me their bed to sleep in. And, you know, I could have slept on the blow-up mattress. And uh, blow-up mattresses are hard to sleep uh, on uh, when you get older. You kind of roll with them, you know. You have to roll off of them. And I, you know, they're hard to get up and down off of. But I appreciate them giving my real bed. How many of you all know about them blow-up mattresses? They're, they're yeah. But anyway, um, you know, I didn't even know that until later on, and I found out, and that kind of touched my heart. Well, uh, so anyway, Jonathan's dad is a great preacher in San Diego. Church runs 17, 1,800 people. I mean, it's a big church, and so his dad's kind of famous in, in San Diego for Lighthouse Baptist Church. Well, he married this missionary's daughter, Ruth, and Ruth was the oldest daughter of missionary Kevin Wynn. He's the missionary to Mexico City. Pastor's one of the largest churches in the world. And so... It was through that, uh, preaching there at that church, that I met missionary Kevin Wynn. I knew of him, but I met him, and by the end of the week, he said, Pastor Weedo, would you like to come to Mexico City and preach in my Bible college? I said, Brother Wynn, I'd be honored to. He wanted to know if I traveled. He said, you can pick out the week you want to come, fly out on a Monday, fly home on a Friday. You won't even have to miss a Sunday. I said, man, that's my kind of deal right there. And so, uh, again, I flew out to Mexico City, had a great time, and, and all of that. Well, I went out there in 2015. And then I went back in 2017. Well, in the meantime, Jonathan uh, Fisher surrendered to be a missionary to Alaska. Yeah, Alaska. And God broke his heart. Listen to me now. God broke his heart and for the Eskimo people in those remote villages. You can't get there by car. You've got to have a boat. You've got to have an airplane to get to these villages that I'm talking about. And so I'm talking to Jonathan's father-in-law, and we're in Mexico City eating a, a Mexican food, eating some fajitas or something like that, some steak skirt or whatever you call it, a big old piece of steak. And it's really flavorful. They know how to do it in Mexico City, I'm, I promise you. And you can look at me and tell I've got experience what I'm talking about. But anyway, so we're there eating, and, and Brother Wynn, you know, Brother Wynn's an unusual personality. I mean, I read his prayer letter every month, just about reached thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Mexico City's one of the largest uh, uh, cities in the world I mean like 30 something thousand you know with the suburbs and all that and I've been up on the mountain there and looked out across the city and man just city as far as you can see in every direction it's just unbelievable how many people are there and they run they run 90 buses at his church on Sunday 90 buses they run I mean the, the Sunday one, one time I preached there on Wednesday night they had 9200 people on the Wednesday night service Thursday night service rather Thursday night that Sunday before they'd had like 16,000 I mean, I've never heard nothing like that. That's John. That's about population they elderate almost. I mean, it's unbelievable. So this is a great man of God. And I'm sitting there and we're talking, you know, and he's kind of, you know, he's unusual personality and we're talking. And he said, Preacher, I can't for the life of me understand why my son-in-law and Brother Wynn's daughter, Ruth, was his secretary for years, the oldest daughter, and kind of worked in their ministry there, that real ginormous ministry there in Mexico City. And he said, I, I can't for the life of me understand why in the world you'd want to go to remote villages in Alaska where there's very few people when you've got all these mega cities with millions of people that are lost and that need to be saved. And I was reading this and I thought, the reason why Jonathan Fisher didn't go to a mega city is because of the Holy Spirit. He might have said, Lord, I want to go over here. And the Holy Spirit said, no, Jonathan. You're not going over here. And Jonathan might have said, well, well, Lord, I want to go over here. And the Lord said, no, Jonathan, you're not going over here either. Well, Lord, where do you want me to go? And Jonathan was kind of waiting on the Lord. And then the Lord said, Jonathan, I want you to go reach the Eskimos. Eskimos in villages that nobody's ever been to with a gospel witness. And I, I called Jonathan this week. He's my buddy and... He's built a prophet's chamber for me in Alaska. So I'm going to Alaska 
Say, when are you going? I don't know, but I'm going. He built a prophet's chamber for Brother Weedo to stay in. And uh, so I called Jonathan. I said, Jonathan, I said, what kind of boat was that that you... Jonathan started praying like we would pray for a bus. Jonathan started praying that God would give him a boat. Because you can't get to these villages that he goes to by water. You can't get there any other way. And so he started praying that God would give him a boat. And you know, there's special kind of boats that they have for that part of the world, for that part of the country, okay? Boats that are built to withstand, you know, the ice and all the things that you encounter in the waters. And so he got a hold of this boat company. And he, uh, the boat cost $160,000. It's a huge craft specific explorer. That's what it's called. A huge craft specific explorer. It was on sale from 160000 for 130000 And Jonathan called the boat company and told him what he was going to do. And they sold him that boat for 50000 The company paid for the rest of it. He was looking for a faith-based company, for a company that had people in the company that loved the Lord. And that company, that company gave him that boat for $50,000. Now listen to me. I've been to a lot of church planting conferences, and I went to one this year in Oklahoma City, and, and they raised $31,000 for my son Jake in, 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 uh, in Lafayette, Louisiana. $31,200 for Jake, big, tall, red-headed Jake. And that was a blessing to my heart. But I was there two or three years ago when a bunch of preachers gave $50,000 to buy a boat. I mean, I know I'll never see that happen again as long as I live. He got up to about twenty-five or 30000 and Brother Sam, the man who was, uh, who was uh, moderating the meeting, said, what do you think, Jonathan? Jonathan said, I think the Lord wanted us to raise it all. And somebody said, I'll give 5000 And somebody said, I'll give 2000 I mean, next thing you know, we had $50,000. God did that. This afternoon... Our blue and white buses will crank up here and they'll go out and we'll go across the, the town and we'll bring in little boys and girls and take them across town to our gymnasium. And we'll have a program for them and boys and girls will hear about Jesus. Amen. But up in Alaska, Brother Jonathan cranks up his boat. Instead of having a bus route, he's got a boat route. And he'll drive his boat from village to village. I think there's six villages on his route and and he said, Brother Eddie, I, I, this year I'm adding the third one. I'm already going to two now, but I'm adding the third village this year. And he's just growing, you know, just getting up there. And there's a lot to contend with in Alaska, you know. And, and he goes in those villages and he helps them cut up the meat and do all the things they do. He works right alongside of them and kind of wins them over to himself and loves them. But I'll tell you, I'm glad Eskimos are getting saved. He's coming to our missions conference, Brother Jonathan is, not this year, but next year. He's going to be here, amen. He loves me, I mean, he loves me and... And, and tells me he loves me. You know, he's just a good young man. I'm really, really proud of him. Now, I, I'm saying all this morning that God directs us in our life, but sometimes we have to just wait and we have to listen. Hey, I'm glad today that 30 years ago when I was going to be a dairy farmer, there's my milk and muscle. Brother Russell, it's still in good, good work and order. No milk and muscle. I was going to milk cows. I was going to be a dairy farmer, but God said, no, J.D., why don't you go beyond that? Why don't you go beyond what you want to do and what you want to be? Why don't you do something for me? Something that will last forever. Well, then I have to decide. Am I going to do what I want to do? I mean, I've already been to school and learned how to artificially inseminate cows and how to palpate cows, how to pregnancy check cows. I took my final test at the Fort Worth stockyards. Those poor cows will never be the same. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about long gloves and... Anyway, the rest uh, we'll, we'll deal with later. Uh, not good, like doctor stuff, okay? Uh, going up inside of cows and, and all of that, and it's, uh, it's wild. But I'm telling you, I, went through, I was doing all that stuff. Why? So I could be a dairy farmer. Why? Because my dad was a preacher and my brother was a preacher, and I always said somebody's got to make a living. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Then God started dealing with my heart. Oh, man. J.D., why don't you go beyond those cows? Why don't you do something for me, something that would last forever? How'd you wind up in Eldorado, Arkansas? I wound up here because the Holy Spirit. 
He, he led me here. He guided me here. He guided me here. Y'all listening to me? Now look at this story and we'll be done. This is really, really good here. The Holy Spirit prohibited them in their directing. He's kind of, you know, he didn't want them to go there or here or there. And the pleading, look at verse number 8. And they passing by Mysia, Mysia, came down to Troas. Now watch this now. And they're right here on the, on the geographical continent of, of Asia. And their attention would be turned across the Aegean Sea. At this point, they needed some positive directing, okay? They needed God to show them where to go. Look at verse number 9. God didn't want them to go here. He didn't want them to go there. And verse number 9 says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Come over into Macedonia and help us. Are you listening to me this morning? Uh, let me get, um, let me get, uh, let me see here. I need, uh, need some help. Um, Brother Ricky, you and Miss Tanya come up here and help me. Can y'all come help me for a minute? They're thinking, wow, he always uses the younger people. Why in the world to pick us? Brother Chad, you and Miss Paula come and help me. Yeah. Brother, uh, Brother Ricky, Miss Tanya, y'all just kind of stand here. Brother Paul, uh, Brother Chad, Miss Paula, y'all can just stand right over there. And, and we're just going to let one of them kind of represent the missionaries. And, and how would you like to be an Eskimo born off in some remote village? They don't know nothing about nothing about God, and who knows what they're worshiping, you know. I mean, I don't even know what Eskimos worship or what kind of belief system they have, but I'm sure it's far removed from what the Word of God and, you know, probably a lot of traditions that Eskimos have always believed and all that, and who knows what, what it's all about. But hey, listen, can you see uh, Eskimos in your mind? Brother Ricky got that beard going, and it's cold up there in Alaska, and, and, and you know, they've got them an igloo out there, and they're living in a remote village, and they're, they're killing fish, and putting them in the freezer and getting ready for winter time and trying to make sure everything don't freeze up. And, and, and you know, and they're, they're missionaries. And, 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 but over in Alaska, uh, you know, uh, there, there, there's an Eskimo. And he's hollering, he's crying out, Hey, come over to Alaska. Come over to Alaska and help us. Y'all come over here and help us. Why would the missionary come? Because they heard God tell them, Hey, yeah, and then Brother Paul, y'all stay, y'all stay over there, Brother Chad, stay over there just a minute. And they're going to be missionaries uh, to uh, El Dorado, Arkansas. We'll just let them represent our, our town here. Come over to El Dorado and help us. Come over to El Dorado and help us. That's the cry I heard 30 years ago. Now let me have the Wrightsel family. Y'all get up there. The Wrightsel family. Hey, how did they know out of all the countries in the world that God... Why, how come God didn't direct them to Alaska? How come God didn't direct them to El Dorado, Arkansas, or some other place in the world that needed a church? But through prayer and, and the Holy Spirit's guiding and leading, over in Spain today, there are people that are crying. and They don't even know what's missing in their life. There's a God-sized hole that's missing in their life. And if they die in their sin, they're going to split hell wide open. And they're crying out. For, and listen, you know what they're saying? Come over Come over into Spain and help us. That we could be saved. That we could hear the gospel. That we could hear the gospel. Oh, wow, man, I'm so glad. Listen, hey, I'm, well, I might never go to Spain. And I don't know if I'll get to Alaska or not. I want to go. As he said, preacher, if you come, we'll catch some really big fish. Brother Bobby, man, that's real tempting. He said, preacher, if you want to go bear hunting, I'll take you bear hunting thought, wow, that'd be fun. Hey, I love people and I love all that. I love I love to hunt and fish, but hey, I love Eskimos too. I, w- I love to see Eskimos get saved. Are y'all listening to me? I'd love to go to Spain one day and see Spaniards get saved. Brother Alan Copeland was a missionary to Puerto Rico. And he said, Brother Weedon, I want you to lead this little couple to the Lord. And there was a young Puerto Rican couple that couldn't speak English. 
And he translated for me from English to Spanish. From English to Spanish. Spanish to English. And I would say what I said in English and he would tell them what I said to Spanish. And that little couple bowed their head and prayed. Received Christ as their soul. Oh, that blessed my heart. Some of these countries I don't even speak good English in. But they interpret for me and they tell people about Jesus. It's a blessing, y'all. It's a blessing. Come over to Spain. Come over to Alaska. Come over to El Dorado, Arkansas. The reason why I want to do that mail out and get the gospel in every home in our zip codes because there may be some homes that we hadn't, we couldn't get to, couldn't find. But we want to get the gospel in every home. So that way nobody could stand and say one day, hey, I lived in El Dorado and we never, we, you never gave me a track. You never gave me the gospel. Man, I don't want their blood to be required at my hand. Amen. I want everybody to have the opportunity to be saved. What they do with it, then I want to put every seed, Brother Bob, about eight inches apart. I don't care if it's good soil or bad soil. I just want to plant the seed of the Word of God in people's hearts. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. And I'm glad I'm saved today. And I'm glad I listen. I'm glad I'm not in Texas milking cows. I'm glad I'm in Arkansas chasing sinners. Well, the path in their directing. Look in Acts chapter 16. Look at verse number, verse number 10. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia and assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And again, the famous Macedonian call. And Look at verse number 11. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course. And I'm not sure how to say that. Samothria. Um, and the next day to Neapolis. And again, the province of Macedonia was uh, the northern half of what used to be known as Greece, and then Achaia, where the Lord did, uh, Paul did a lot of ministry, uh, was the uh, southern half of what the former nation of Greece. And so these two provinces included, listen to me now, they included Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, Athens, Corinth. All these were significant places that Paul had ministry. Ministries on his second and third missionary journeys. So once God gave them their direction, man, they didn't beat around the bush. God said, I don't want you to go north. I don't want you to go south. You're coming from the east. God said, I want you to go this way. I want you to go to Macedonia. And man, I'm telling you, they promptly, they promptly, I mean, they didn't beat around the bush. Verse number 10, after he'd seen the uh, vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Immediately. And once the will of God is made clear, we have an obligation to do the will of God immediately. And God makes it known plainly. We don't need to sit around and, 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 and debate about it. No. Once they knew what God had for them to do, they acted upon it. And then I want you to notice this in closing this morning. In verse number 10, it says, After... He had seen the vision immediately. Then I want you to notice the little word, we. We endeavored. The book of Acts was written by Luke, the physician. Luke, the doctor. Dr. Luke. He said, we endeavored. So all of a sudden, Luke joins this missionary team. He says, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, surely gaining, uh, gathering that the Lord had called us. Notice the word us there. For the preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we we, so Luke's including himself all of a sudden in verse number 10, verse number 11. And uh, he's including himself. And from thence, verse 12, to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and the colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. So again, you have, we came, we endured, called us, we were, we, 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 okay? And so, uh, what a blessing. And Luke was a physician, Luke was an, uh, an intellectual man, uh, he was an author, he was a doctor, he was a Greek by background. But having a doctor, a medical doctor along with you, to help only uh, enhances the effectiveness, their effectiveness on the mission field. Recently, a uh, preacher friend of mine, Heritage Baptist Church in Haslett, Texas, Brother Eric Crawford, took a group of, of forty, um, a group of thirty people, to Honduras with Harold and Lena Pride and Leslie Alba and Alba Pride. Uh, we have two missionary families that we support. Uh, Harold and Lena Pride are the mom and dad, and uh, Leslie and 
and his wife. Uh, They've been in Honduras uh, many, many years. Great works there. And says the team saw 434 patients. This is a medical team. Came to minister from Heritage Baptist in Haslett with uh, patients with over 40 coming to Christ. 40 coming to Christ. Isn't that a blessing? And uh, so you have now, you have Paul and Silas. You have Paul and Silas. And you have Timotheus, Timothy. You have young Timothy joining that team. And then all of a sudden, uh, Luke, the physician, kind of becomes a part of this missionary team. Are y'all with me? So there's four of them now. It started out just Paul and Silas, and then they picked up Timothy, and then now they've got Dr. Luke with them, okay? And you can imagine the different, you know, backgrounds and so forth, and so each one kind of brought balance to the team, okay? And what one maybe didn't know, maybe the other one did, that type of thing. So God kind of put this little missionary team together. Now, please listen to me. When you, when you fill out your offering envelope on Sundays, and you give a missionary offering right here, where it says world missions. Do you know that you're a part of the team? You see all these missionary boards around the wall and even down the hallway now? All these missionaries, they receive, everybody look at me now, they receive a check from Bible Baptist Church here at Bible Baptist Church every month. They receive a check. The check doesn't go to some whatever, it goes to those missionaries. In other words, they, uh, nobody's skimming off the top. You know, whatever we send them, they get all that money and that puts beans on their table or whatever, okay? You see what I'm saying? We're we're a part of their livelihood. And it's a big deal because when we get to heaven, hey, you know, some plant, the Bible says, some water, and then God gives the increase. And there's three groups of people in every church. There's the go missionary, like these missionaries right here. They're taking the gospel to Spain. And and thank God for all of our go missionaries around the wall this morning. But then there's also co-missionaries. You say, what are co-missionaries? That's us. We go out and work our tails off and we earn our keep by the sweat of our brow and then we bring our tithes and our missions offering and we give to help sustain them while they're on. So we're having just as big a part as they are. They're doing the legwork, but we're co-missionaries by our prayers and by our financial support. I love the song that says, Send the Light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. I love that song. But you know what? Please listen to me. If we're going to send the light, somebody's got to pay the light bill. If we're going to send the light, somebody's got to pay the light bill. Because it costs money to go from here to Spain with a family of five. It costs money to get a house. It costs money to put groceries on their table while they're out there spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And from right here in South Arkansas, we get to have a part. Most of you are never going to go to Spain. But wouldn't it be good to get to heaven one day? Peyton, come here. We're going to pretend like he's a little Spanish boy. How old are you? He's 13. We're going to pretend he's a big Spanish boy. He's a teenager. He's 13 years old. He's in Spain. And we sent the right souls over to Spain. They heard the Macedonian call, come over and help us. And they went over and they found Peyton. And Peyton got saved by the grace of God. And you and I was given from right here in South Arkansas our missionary offering to help send that missionary to Spain. And the Bible says that this young man right here is fruit that abounds. Fruit that abounds to our account. Not just the missionary's account, but fruit that abounds to our account. And you know what? We get to heaven. A little Spanish boy comes up. Man, he's going to be glad he got saved. But I'm going to be glad that I got all some of my money and I had a part in helping reach him because he's got a never dying soul. I'm going to be glad I had a part. If that's one of my grandbabies or one of my children, I'd want somebody to tell them about Jesus. But I'm glad we got missionaries that are willing to go. So there's the, the go missionary, there's the co-missionary, and then the third person is the no missionary. And that's the old hard head. He squeezes a nickel till the buffalo bellers. He's tight as Dick's hat man. I mean, this sucker is so tight that at nighttime, 
he gets up and walks around the bed. He don't roll over in the bed because he don't want to wear the sheets out. He gets up and walks around the bed instead of rolling over in the bed. That's how tight he is. Don't want to wear the sheets out. That's terrible, y'all. You old stingy thing, you. Hey, just keep your money. God don't need your money if you got that kind of attitude. But when you get to heaven, you're going to be saying, man, I wish I'd listen to the Spirit of God when he's talking to me about doing a little something to help them missionaries. Hey, y'all, it ain't like this. There ain't just a few people giving the missions here at Bible Baptist. We couldn't support all these missionaries. It's like, we got to go real broad. We need everybody to have a part in helping us reach the world. You see what I'm saying? And, man, I'm not here to beat you over here with the Bible, but, man, I'm just so excited. When I get to heaven, there's going to be people from Ghana, West Africa, and Vanuatu. I don't even know where Vanuatu's at. And Ecuador, and Honduras, and Dominican Republic, and Nigeria. Man, all these different countries. I've never been to none of them countries, hardly. I've been to India. I've been to the Philippines. I've been to Puerto Rico and Mexico. But there's a whole bunch of these countries I've never, I've never set foot on. Probably never will. Oh, but man, when them souls start coming up and saying, thank you, Brother Weedo, for preaching on missions. Thank you for challenging the people to give. I, I, I got in. I got saved. I'm going to be so thankful that we had a heart for missions. Let's bow our heads this morning. Wow, thank you. If you're here this morning, and wow, you're glad you're saved by the grace of God. You know that, man, if I died today, I know I'd go to heaven, preacher. I'm sure I'm glad that Jesus Christ is my Savior, and I'm not ashamed of that. Would you slip your hand up as a testimony? You've accepted Christ as your Savior. Preacher, I know if I die today, that heaven will be my home. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're here and you say, Preacher, man, I, I'm just not sure about it all. I'm soaking it in and all that. Well, let me just tell you this morning. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. God don't want none of you to go to hell. And if you're here this morning and you're lost and you've never been saved, the Bible way, God wants you to go to heaven. He's provided salvation. It's full and it's free. But I'm telling you, it cost him his only begotten son. He willfully, he willingly gave his only begotten son so that you and I could have a home in heaven. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's not my way or your way or the Baptist way or the Catholic way or anybody else's way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. All roads don't lead to heaven. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The only way to heaven. The Bible says neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's the only way to heaven is the Bible ways through Jesus Christ. And I've accepted him. I've tasted him. He's good. And wow, he wants you to be saved. He's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. So if you're here this morning and you're lost, you could pray and ask Jesus Christ. If you realize you're lost and you realize your sin has to be paid for, there's a penalty on sin. You can die and go to hell and pay for it yourself. Or you can trust Christ as your Savior. When I was 15 years old, I realized I was lost. And, man, I trusted Christ as my personal Savior. And I don't know a lot of things about a lot of things. But I do know that I was lost. And I do know that I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins. And I invited him into my heart to be my Savior. And I know he's changed my life. What a blessing. I'm glad I know that when I die, I always tell people I'm not going to heaven because I'm redheaded. I'm going to heaven because Jesus lives in my heart. If you're here this morning and you're lost and you've never been saved, I prayed something like this, just a simple sinner's prayer. I prayed and I said, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I have done wrong. I don't want to die and go to hell. I want you to forgive me of all my sins. I invite you into my heart to be my Savior. I'm trusting in you and you alone to take me to heaven when I die. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. And I just prayed just a simple sinner's prayer just like that, and I trusted Christ as my Savior. Listen, I pray today that you, if you haven't done that, I pray you do that today. I mean right now. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Please don't put it off. If you've not done that, do that right now. Would you do that right now? Would you pray and just ask the Lord to save you? He wants to save you. He loves you. He sure does. He loves you. We love you. 
But God loves you a lot more than we do. He wants to save you right now. Father, we love you today. We sure do. I know there are people this morning here, Lord, that are hurting. I know there are people in our midst, Lord, that may not know you as their Savior. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. I thank you, Lord, for those that were saved yesterday, Lord. And we give you glory in the church for souls being saved. And, Lord, go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I thank you for every gospel track and every brochure that was passed out about Anniversary Sunday. But, Lord, I thank you for those precious souls that came to know you yesterday. Lord, I think it was 19 souls that got saved yesterday on soul winning. Lord, we just say to God be the glory. Like Brother Reitzel said, man, we ought to be shouting it out and thanking the Lord for what you did. And, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you this morning. But, Lord, if there's somebody here this morning, we pray that they, too, would be saved today. Lord, please bless those that have lost loved ones in, in, uh, to death here recently, Lord. Comfort their hearts, Lord. This dear family, Lord, lost a little baby. Lord, I pray that you'd comfort them. Come alongside. Lord, please help them and bless them, God. You're going to have to help them, Lord, in the days ahead. It's going to be hard. Lord, we just pray that, and lift them up to you this morning. Be with all those, others, those, those that are sick again and those who have special needs and financial difficulties and uh, you've got some looking for jobs. And I pray you'd open the door, Lord, and make a way. It might not be this way or that way. We're just waiting on you, Lord, to show us the way. Please show us the way. We'll do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Number 107. 107. If you need to come this morning, you step out and come. God bless you. God bless you. Don't wait on anybody else. God bless you. God bless you. The old preacher said it's good to be in the Lord's house when he's home. Hey, he's home this morning. He's talking to us. Man, I'm so thankful for people that would listen to God. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you want me to go over here, I'll go over here. Lord, can I go over there? No, I don't want you to go over there right now. By the way, Paul went back to some of those places the Lord forbid him to go to at that time. He went to those places at a later time. But it's always good to be where the Lord wants you to be in the center of His will. Amen. Let Him guide us. And He'll, he'll guide our stops and He'll guide our starts. And that's how the right souls know that they're going to Spain today and not China. That's how they know they're going to Spain today and not some other country because the Holy Spirit dealt with their heart about Spain. Come over to Spain and help us is the cry this morning. Come over to Spain and help us. Rachel family take a place back in the back if y'all don't mind we'll come by and give them the right hand of fellowship on the way out and